Well, welcome. It is Thursday and we are doing Painting with Shauna on Thursday. I've been doing this now for a while. We're coming up to a year in just a, a few more weeks in April sometime and we're in March already. It's pretty amazing. I, I finished the yellow, Little Yellow Warbler and I was so pleased with it I actually am going to keep it in my own home and I'm going to hang it in the uh, my bathroom. I have old paintings from 2013 that need to be updated and I just was so thrilled with how this pattern worked out. It's kind of like I've married my uh, quilting love of fabric and pattern with, with my painting love that I have now. In the old days I was a quilter. You might not know that but I was. Anyway, so this little baby is done and it's going to, uh, once I get the isolation coat on and, and varnish it, it will be hanging in my bathroom. And tonight we're going to start a new painting. And the painting we're starting tonight is a little yellow warbler. And it's going to be part of that three-part series that will hang in my bathroom. So it will also have triangles, but not the same as the... Uh, the little yellow warbler. So this yellow rump warbler is our next target to see what we can get done. I've had a great week. I hope you have too. Let's get painting. Okay, so I have my value scale here. One of the things that happens when you print off a picture is it is about 30% it's just it prints quite dark so I want to actually paint this painting a little lighter than um, than it actually is in front of me so I have my value scale which I'm going to use to sort of match up my values and what I found interesting when I was doing the colors is this is definitely a low chroma blue and this is a sort of a neutralized gray. I found that really interesting. And the beautiful yellows, I mean, this is a spring photo, so they're at their best. So let's uh, get moving here. The first thing I'm going to do is the background. And thankfully, I made enough of the background to be able to do, oh, better open it with, okay, there we go, to be able to do three paintings, well, maybe even more than three paintings. So that was good. That was like good planning. So I have sound. Um, remember, I can't uh, stream at the same time, so I'm not able to see where you're, where you're from or if you've got any questions. So if you have any questions as I go along, please leave a comment below and I will come right after the uh, live stream is done at 7 our time. Uh, Mountain Standard Time and I will um, come and answer that. If you can say hello that would be lovely too. So we'll start with just the background. It's that very pretty blue and we'll put be putting the gold leaf over top of it again. Well the imitation gold leaf not the real gold leaf. Okay. So I mix paint and I put it in these little salad dressing containers and I just uh, make sure that I spritz it with water regularly and or put it in a plastic bag with some paper towel and it's really convenient to be able to uh, store little bits of paint that I need for my for my work that I'm doing especially these small paintings. I finished uh, filming for my Acrylic One class and if you've been over to YouTube you, you see I'm on to Lesson 7 comes out tomorrow. I have uh, the blog post to finalize and get everything scheduled and that will get out tomorrow. And then I'm on to editing Lesson 8 and, and beyond. It was a busy week getting that done. I think what I really like about these designs is this large amount of space and then we'll put, I'll put pattern in behind 
and it's quite uh, striking. Well, at least I think it's striking. Uh, the pine grosbeak went to its new new uh, um, to its new home. So it's has flown the, flown the coop. The auction ended on Sunday and somebody in Yellowknife was successful. These auctions are quite fun. Okay, so I'm just filling in the background. And this is one coat, I'll do a, a second coat on it after I get the whole thing filled in. I've been working on my uh, painting in a minute uh, for the yellow warbler video that I that I put out so I'm hoping to get that out in the next day or two probably Saturday unless I get like totally at it tonight and then think oh I'll get it out tonight <laughs> So I think this this bird is on a tamarack tree given the textures that I'm seeing, but I'm not 100% sure. Something I have to sort of work on is uh, getting, tr you know, branches in the house and figuring out what kind of tree it is. So that when I'm looking at them when I'm painting, I have a sense of what I'm trying to create. Okay, let's move on to the bird itself. I'm going to spritz this background color so it stays fresh, seal it up, and then find the brush that I want. Okay, what other brush do I want? that one too. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is start with the head. So because it's it's actually too dark, I'm going to figure out the value. So that's sort of a value four, which means I want it to be a value five. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. This is value five. can always darken it up on the second layer but the first pass I want to see if I can lighten it up a little bit so that it's a um, more realistic looking. So as we're turning form I'm going to try and use three different values to do that. So I, I created a value scale of uh, from just bone black to um, for the bird because most of the bird is a, a, a very low chroma blue. It's really interesting um, how that is. Okay, we're going to come around here. Now I'm going to soften the edge here because I see I have a hard edge here and I just take my clean brush, dry brush, and just softly move it, the paint around. And then I'm going to come in with value four. For the darker area of the face as it's turning here. Yeah. And then to value three as it comes around here into into the around the to the beak. There we go. A little bit more paint on my, so we can see the value shift. Clean my brush off, dry it off, and gently just pull along. I'm going to pull some of the paint off, but I'm not worried about that. And I'm going to pull it down here. So we're trying to create the sense of form. Put that right there. As uh, 
as we're working on this first pass. Okay, so now we have some yellow. Which yellow do we have? Oh, maybe down a little bit here. We'll get a little bit of this in here too. Yeah, that's better. And then over here, we'll get some cad yellow light. It could be down a little bit too. This first pass is just to get things in place and then we can come back and correct it as we go along. Okay. So I can see that it's a darker value here. So I just want to bring that darker value, that shape in. And then I'm going to bring it along here and then drop it up to a value five around here. I'll do some, yeah, we've got some interesting patterning there. Okay, so is this a value nine? Let's check that out. Uh, it's a value eight. So let's get a value eight. So the top part I want a little lighter. The, dark, the bottom part can stay the value that it is because it will, uh, it's the underneath part of the bird, so that's all right. Okay, I can see it actually goes a little darker yet. We'll get some, grab some value seven. And darken it up. When we do the second pass, we'll just we'll be able to be more accurate because we'll be able to see and compare to what we're looking at. And I will have a new image to work from because uh, I'm going to print off an image that's lighter. I just couldn't get to that today. And I thought I had my phone shut off, and people are texting me. What is that about? Ah. Oh. I thought I had my sound all shut off so that nobody could, I would hear anything. Oh, here, there. Okay, there. Now I've got my silence on. I forgot to do that. Okay, so here's that value four for in here, the darker part. The warblers are such feisty little birds. They're so much fun. I just really enjoy the warblers. And then a little lighter yet. Think about the shape of the of the warbler and bring the Paint along that shape if you we can do that. And down here. Now all this little detail in here, I'm going to try and be as careful as possible, but it's a, it's a big brush, biggish brush, and so it's not always so easy to do. Okay, and there's an underneath here that comes up. There's all sorts of textures in there that where the white is and stuff. That'll be the last thing I do. Okay, so now we're into the yellows again. And I'm going to start with a cad yellow medium. I've mixed a string of cad yellow medium for a few values and cad yellow light for a few values so that I can sort of go between the two of them and have some interesting variations. The yellow is so bright, it's so cheerful. Okay, so value, I think I'm gonna to go to a value nine for here and we'll see if that's going to be 
where I want it to be. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and then we have value nine here. And I see that it's going sort of value nine and a half. So I'm just going to bring in a little bit more white in here and lighten it up and bring it around here. There's a little bit. And there's a little edge of that right there. And then it gets darker under the beak. So it's, I'll say it's probably a value eight. We'll find out when we put it on. Oh yeah, that's, that's good. If you think the color is too dark, that happens sometimes, happens often, um, you can come in with just a lighter value and mix the paint right onto the, the board as you're working along. Okay, so I'm going to start with a value 5 up here. And there's a little bit of that value three around or value four right around here at the edge. Go up to the value six as we come up and around. Here there seems to be a little lighter shift. So in the spring when these come back Oh, it's so much fun. Um, I actually will go and spend a lot of time outside trying to track them down and see them in interesting different places. I've got a great picture of a yellow rump warbler on reeds that I want to paint at some point. Okay, now, oh, there's some yellow on the head. Now, the yellow closest to the top of the head, and add a little bit of white in. I'm just going to sort of bring some really bright uh, cad yellow light in there. And then using the cad yellow medium that's been brought down a value, I will bring it, oops, now I'm mixing in with the grays. Okay. We're getting into, I'm going to get some of that, into the back tail feathers. And they've got a bit of a brown tinge to them. They're mostly gray, but they've got a bit of the low chroma yellow in them. So I've just uh, taken some raw umber and mixed it with my neutralized gray to bring it in. Probably too, well, no, maybe not too much. We're just building it along here. And I'm going to go right across so I could follow the tail feathers. Right along here. Okay. And then we're going to go to a lighter value, taking that raw umber with us, just a little bit of it, and lighten it up, and bring it around here. We may not have the colors really correct right at the, at the start, because it's not always easy to get them 100% correct when they're, you're comparing it to, um, a, you know, a background that's not completed. Okay. Value 8. Okay, and that's the dark. Okay, and value 9. I had thought I would get organized enough to have a vote, but that just didn't happen this week. So not next next time, but the following time I will get you out to help me
figure out what I'm painting next. And by then, hopefully we'll have some uh, fun birds starting to come back. We might end up having to do an owl because I've, I've got a great picture of a great gray owl. In fact, I was out at Yellowknife River and I heard, I, um, and, uh, I heard a great horned owl hooting out there. I wasn't dressed to go traipsing through the bush trying to find it, so I just enjoyed listening to it. But she, but it called several times while I just sat there and enjoyed it. Oh my goodness gracious. It was fantastic. So if I put a light wash of paint here, I can still see underneath. So that when I get back to my little brushes, I can uh, do that. There we go. Nice and... Huh. Interesting. I always find it interesting what you see when you start to look closer. But I do see I need a smaller brush. Now I need a brush that I can control and, and use for the beak, but not too small. So we're going to start with the lighter part up here. Okay, and then we're going to get the darker part down below. Got quite the pointy little beak. Take a little bit less paint on it because I want to control it. And I'm looking at my image and I'm looking back and forth to see what the shape of the beak is so that I can move the paint around and get it to where I want it to be. A little further, it seems like it's a little further. Nice and there we go. Now, it is not turned up like that. It is more flat than that, so I can flatten it out. And I can probably flatten out this area too because, well, that's quite rounded and it's not that round. Um, but those corrections can be made as when we go along here, straighten it out. And clean it up here. Okay. Use my little brush to sort of bring in here. Oh no, it's way too small. Let's get the bigger brush where it is though. There it is. Oops, spritz my paint so it doesn't dry out. So I have these little spritzers. I have like four of them here. And every one of them is filled with distilled water. I don't use regular water in them. I use distilled water as it doesn't promote um, um, mold issues. And that's, you really don't want mold on in your paint. It's not a good idea. I'm just gonna bring that shape down and it comes up a little bit this way. And it comes around here. It's darker there, so let's get it darker. All of those fine little uh, feathers I can do near the end at the final. So I don't put a lot of paint on 
because I find that if you put too much paint on, it's too hard to manage and I like it to be remain smooth. So I'd rather put layers on and not be too ahead of myself. So here we go with the leg. We have one leg showing, the other one is in behind, one foot. And interestingly, this warbler has black toes and black um, where the yellow warbler didn't have that. It was a different colored feet. Nice thin little, we got a general shape there. Uh, come in with a thin brush and we're going to kind of just choose out where that light is hitting on the, the foot. There we go. So we just have a little definition, not a lot of definition. Now I didn't really make a paint for the uh, this so I'm just going to grab some grays because it looks very gray to me and just mix in with um, mix it in with the raw umber because it seems like it's that kind of just mix a couple of values and then we can sh shift between them I don't know if they'll be accurate but there you go this is the step that we find that out in. I love all this little texture on here. And, uh, you know, I'll probably do it because it makes me happy to do that kind of texture. So we'll start with the darker here. And get a little bit of the lighter. And bring it around here. And then go in between the two. To create that sense of form. To create form you need at least three values shifting from dark to light and uh, it can be even just subtle value shifts. It doesn't have to be big value shifts but it needs to be value shifts. And sometimes when the light is really flat you're not going to see um, a lot of value shifts and you can see that the light is fairly flat on here. We're not got extra highlights. We don't have um, uh, washed out areas of the bird as a result of the sun being up at, on it. I actually prefer to photograph birds it, on cloudy days. Their colors are more uh, intense and, and more beautiful. And you're not fighting with the sun being in the wrong place, as it often is when you're trying to take pictures of things that are moving. Uh, it, and it's a consistent light. So I really like that. I'm bring a little bit more gray into that as we go over the... There we go. Now there were a bunch of branches in the background and I just very quietly made them go away. That's why you have pro programs like Affinity to make them go away. So I haven't decided if I, what kind of triangle background I've, I've got two other triangle backgrounds to try because I want them all to have a triangle background but not the exact same background. I think that's that doesn't really each bird needs its own. So next time the next bird that I'm going to paint in this series is not another warbler but it is a feisty bird. And it is the uh, ru ruby crown kinglet. And oh my gosh, what a fun bird that is. 
in the spring before they get too settled into their nest. They were, they're very territorial, the ruby crown kinglets. And so then you can get them to uh, come to you and uh, with the crown up going, hey, you're in my space. I've got to do a bird song or two and just take a few pictures and say thank you and say nice to visit with you. Though I don't think I saw one last year. We were so cold last year that lots of birds didn't come. It was a really quiet birding year last year. I hardly took any pictures. The year before I took like 70,000 or something like that. And, and this year, last year, it was just not a birding year. It was cold for a long time. April was miserable. April's my least favorite month in Yellowknife anyway, or in the north. Actually, from the time I've moved north, way back in 1984, when we moved uh, to what was called Frobisher Bay with our then two-year-old son, who is going to be 40 next week in, in 11 days. It's like, hokey, Dinah. <laughs> time, time. Anyway... Our, uh, it's uh, uh, now called Chaluit, and it's in a different, prov a different territory even now. It's Nunavut. When we moved there, there was no internet at all. That didn't happen until, well, after we got here. Shop there was no Sears store, so shopping there was non-existent. And we were talking about the cost of milk and that when we lived there the kids we all drank powdered milk because it was 14 or 15 dollars for four liters of milk because it had to fly in and uh, the cost was quite expensive and it wasn't always yeah so we you did things differently in those days when we first moved north, the very first thing we were told is we had to do what they called a sea lift. And I mean, we came from northwestern Ontario. Like you just go down the street and get, or well, I guess Manitoba before we came north. And it was, um, <laughs> it was a shock and how much you had to spend and what you, like you had to order all your dry goods for the year. Like, well, how many cans of tomato sauce am I going to need? Uh, yeah. And the very, was it the first year? I'm trying to think. It was, a, yeah, I think it was the, Alexander was four. So it was the second year we ordered, wow, we've got it all covered already. Well, not quite. We've got some areas here to cover. Um, we ordered Cheerios and they sent us Honey Nut Cheerios. And our oldest was so excited that he actually slept in the in the sea lift room. There was a little bed in there, so he slept in there. And at four in the morning, he got up and said, Can I have some now? Needless to say, that did not last very long. And we were out of it. It was not going to make it a whole year. Whew, there's interesting shapes. We had all sorts of adventures there. We were there for five years before we moved to Yellowknife in 89. Our second child was born there. Every time we moved, we had another boy. So we decided stopping moving might be a good idea. Like three boys was enough once we got here. Okay. Let's just blend that in a little bit and bring in some of that dark just over top of the eye. And around the front of the eye. I think Frobisher Bay would have been a very different experience if it had been with internet so that you could order from uh, places and get stuff and 
It's hard when you were interested in doing crafts and stuff and you couldn't buy anything locally. Ha! Huh, there we go. Let's get this part in here done. Okay, so they're lighter at the top. Actually, they're pretty light all the way along, but we'll just get this shape in here. There's a little shape there. There's a little shape there. And I'm just building up the shapes that I think I'm seeing, knowing that I'm going to correct them as I go along. Darken it as I come around because it's coming away from the light. They would be darkening up just a touch. And these ones are certainly darker here. And there's a little bit of light there. Okay, spritz my paints again. Keep them nice and fresh. Stand back. Have a look. See what's missing here. I'll bring a little bit of darkness here. Just to... A little bit around the wing here. The different parts of the wing. I can see this and this and this. I'm going to definitely need a smaller brush when I get there. Hmm. And there's this here. Get that cleaned off and move that paint around. I got a little bit too much paint there. Just shape it. Now I took too much off. Hmm, 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 hmm. Um, 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 there's some dark there. And some dark in here. Whether I got these shapes right or not. I need a smaller brush. Let's look for a smaller brush. Where is my little red brush? There we are. When they have smaller shapes, you'd need a smaller brush to manage them. Oops. Okay. Here we go. We're getting there. Almost got this baby covered already. I'm really having fun doing these small paintings, though I do have a big painting that I really want to get onto, but time has not permitted. There's been other commitments that have come up around the video stuff as I'm figuring that all out and doing my big end learning. So say hello. On If you're still watching, that's awesome. I'm happy that you joined me today. I'll bring a little bit of that yellow in. A little bit of darker yellow. I want to give it a sense of it's moving towards the light. And I'm doing that by using two different yellows. They're subtle, but they're there. And that is Cad Yellow Light and Cad Yellow Medium. Sort of give a interesting different yellows on the bird's head. Now, 
any of the shapes that I don't have right, I'm not going to worry about because I'm going to come around with the background again and correct those. Okay. Well, you know, it looks ugly. It's supposed to look ugly at this point, so I think we're doing all right. They always go through an ugly, t ugly phase before they get to be nice. I've heard other artists say that they, um, that the painting seems to be not going where they want it to be, so they throw it away. I've yet to throw away a painting because what I discovered is if I kept working on it, I was going to get there. And by keeping working on it, it means that um, I get there in my own way and I... Um, And I let it sort of come to, to fruition. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the chin and build up this area um, and coming down into here. And before I go up, I think that's what I'm going to do. We'll see. Let's see. So value eight for underneath the chin. And you'll notice I've brought in my soft brush now because it holds more paint. And then I bring in my other, my brush that I like to sort of press the paint around and move it around. And I see that it goes a little darker right underneath here. So let's make it a little, oops, let's not clean that off and get rid of some of the paint off of it. And then make it a little darker. Oops, too much water on there. Right underneath. And we're just going to move that around and soften the edges. Just soften it up. Needs to dry more. Okay, yeah, I definitely have the angle wrong on that beak, but that we can work on. Why? Oh, I see what's wrong. Okay. Let's go right across here and straighten that out by just adding a little bit of paint, pushing it down, making that shape be what I want it to be. Wrong brush. Each brush seems to have its own role when you're painting. And it takes, you know, I'm forever buying new brushes to try them out because, you know, you get, I have a few favorites, but then, you know, I like to switch it up a bit and see what's next. Okay, so get a little bit of that. In between, we're going to build up some of the darkness around here. I'm going to take this brush and just press that paint around and out so that it's in the right area, but it's uh, just softening it as we go along. And then we're going to bring that darker here. This paintbrush holds a lot of paint, so it can, uh, it's really good for, for modeling and, and uh, working away fairly quickly if I just Ah, see, we're getting some definition happening here now. Oh, sometimes it holds too much paint. There we go. Just move it around. 
blend it out. There we go. I can't say I've paid any attention to birds other than the owl that I heard this last week. Um, the ravens have been in the backyard eating peanuts. The fox has been visiting. The little uh, yellow, the little war, um, house sparrows have been hanging around, and so it's still a busy backyard, but it's not as uh, not as busy as, as it's going to be. Okay, I'm happy with it. Now I'm starting to see it come to life and have some form to it. Clean that off. Pull in some of that lighter. Oops, spritz my paint. Pull in some of this lighter here. I can see it's lighter there, and there's a little bit of lightness there. I'm going to take this, this brush and press it out. I want to soften those edges. I don't want them to be hard. Nope, they need even to be a little bit lighter than that, but I'm going to let it dry first before I do that. Look at this. Make sure that I'm not getting any ridges because that is distracting when you're looking at paintings. And then blend that in. And go another value lighter. And blend that in. If you're working in oil, you, you have more time, but with acrylic you have to sort of blend as you go along to get it to where you want it to be and to keep that, that sort of softening look to it. Okay, here we go. Take the brush and blend it in. If you move fast enough, then the paint underneath the next to it is still a tiny bit wet, enough to be able to blend into and soften those edges and blend. And give that sort of head shape. Quite dark enough there I can see that oops that is too light get rid of the excess paint we'll take a, put some darker in there dry our brush really well before I start moving it around and patting it out Okay. And a touch of extra light, just a touch here. And it comes around. Like that. Soften dry soften it out with this dry simply What is it? Simply Simmons brush. I really like these for just softening the edges. So I'm going to continue to work on the body. We've got 
Oh, we got another five or six minutes. So that we can continue to build up and make it uh, look like it has form. And we'll go up a value here, just a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of paint. We're going to just bounce the dark into it. Take some of that light off and then bring that dark back up. And bounce it in. It's just a slow process. Next week we will work on the, all the finaling details like I did last week with the yellow warbler and I will uh, next week we'll have the pattern figured out and and drawn on here so that I can show you a little bit of I give you a hint of what the pattern is going to look like. It's a triangle pattern. Hallelujah for internet. Lots of ideas out there in the world for me to draw up and do my thing with. It's been lovely and sunny here, cold, well not really cold, cold, but not really cold, sort of March cold. The wind was strong today. I was thinking about the Ides of March when I was walking out there today. It's like, whoo, be careful of those, it's a little chilly. I'm not sure what the Ides of March are. If you know what the Ides of March are, put it down in the comment below <laughs> so that I can, uh, I mean, I probably could go and see what, uh, Professor Google has to say about it. Oh, I see that I've missed an area here. We come in with a little bit of paint here and just soften it. Okay. Oh my gosh, he is so cute. <laughs> yes. I have lots of pictures that are perfect for these little 15 by 15 centimeter pic, um, uh, boards. I'm not sure it would work really on a large board, but they're perfect for these little sweet paintings that I do for the live stream. Okay, so here we have, here we have the chest, which is catching some light and it's going down. So let's put some of that light there. I don't know how light we need it to be, so I'm going to probably over light it. No, it's good. We have all sorts of fan shapes in there that we will come back. So we have that light. Then we're going to take the paint off the brush because too much paint is not a good idea. And we're going to come down a, a step here. And then we're going to blend those two together to sort of create that, that feeling that it's turning away from the light. And you can see that that's happening. The other thing I think we need is a little bit more light right about here, just to sort of, and then blend that one. So that is my light light, my medium light, and my dark light. So this is my light light that I'm putting in place here. Dry it off and clean my brush off, dry it really well and blend it into that medium light. Okay. Yeah, we're starting to see form being created. Now it kind of looks a little flat here, so I think I'm going to darken it a little bit on the underside and I'm going to blend it into that, that dark light, which was here. 
So I'm just going to put them both together in the same area and then just blend that there. Look at that. Just brings it to life. All of a sudden it has more dimension to it. It always is a second pass before that happens for me. I'm just not, um, I don't get it right the, in the first place. I, you know, I have to work at that. It's not a, some people are intuitive painters and can get it right, right away. I'm a, I, I have always been a, um, I would say to you that I'm like a blue collar artist. I'm always at work um, and I just work my way through and, and my training is on the job because I live a million miles away and you don't get to take courses very often. Okay, blend that out. But I think a lot of artists are do their own training sessions because really it's really the time you spend at the easel that gets you to where you want to be and it's not a quick process it's just lots of labor and lots of learning and I'm enjoying doing the videos these videos especially because I don't get any practice teaching right now so that is going to change in April. Uh, COVID protocols are starting to ease every place. I'm not sure it's... And uh, so I am actually going to go and teach at a local school. And I'm going to teach a, my drawing class. Uh, drawing one to two different sessions, two different sets of kids, young people. I actually really enjoy teaching in the schools because it... Um, you never know who's going to be the person who 10 years from now, 15 years from now says, oh, I really want to do that because I remember having a good time doing that. And that was really something I find interesting. So I always think that it's my artist's duty to, um, to see if I can inspire the next generation. Now, most of them won't be inspired. And I will probably never know who I've inspired at the school. I taught there in 2016. Um, I taught both a, a drawing class and a painting class to the same group of kids. Um, and I had such a good time. It was so much fun. So I think this is a good place to stop. I actually think this is right where we need to stop. We need to go away and think about it and seal up my paints well we got a good start on it I'm really happy with the start um, blending is coming along giving that sense of depth I, I mean I still have work to do I still have lots of work to do <laughs> you know that <laughs> um, and uh, when we come back next week, I'll have the branches mostly done, though there will be one branch probably, you know, in here that I will leave so I can show you well how I'm putting the texture on. And I will have the bird to the point where I can make all of the final little tweaks that I love to do. And, uh, and, and I will have a little bit of the patterning on, drawn on. I'll have it all drawn on, actually. Um, well, may, yeah, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, I'll have it drawn on so that we can, I can show you which patterns I've chosen to do in the gold leaf. Anyway, thanks for dropping by. I'm so glad you were here. I'll come and say hi to you if you said hi on uh, Facebook. I, I, and on YouTube, I check for the comments as well. Anyway, I have a blog post to work on so that I can get it sent out tomorrow for Lesson 7, which is all about understanding bias of, of, of paint, whether it's cool or it's warm. And that's Lesson 7 that comes out tomorrow. And I have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14A and 14B 
eight more to work on frantically for the next number of weeks while I while they come out one time a week on Fridays at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. I'm so glad you were here. I will see you soon. Oh, well, we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.